All right, guys, welcome back. Central Florida Prepper here. Uh, today I want to talk about a topic I've actually discussed in the past, a um, little over a month ago, was the um, Triple E virus that is being spreaded by the uh, mosquito population. Now, this is nothing new. I just want to get that out. It's not a new disease. The United States has been dealing with it for quite some time. I mean, it's been recorded on the CDC for a good while now. But I do have some news, and of course, as always, I'll pop up the links for you and pop up here the news article so you can read it yourself later on. Um, but today's comes from CNN. Now, this was dated Tuesday on the 17th of September. All right, two more Eastern equine encephalitis deaths reported in Michigan. Now, the easiest way to say it, the triple E virus. All right, four additional cases of Eastern equine encephalitis, triple E, including two deaths, have been confirmed in southwest Michigan, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services said Tuesday. The mosquito-borne virus, more often known as triple E, is a rare but potential fatal illness. Michigan has confirmed seven total triple E cases including three deaths, officials say. Michigan is currently experiencing its worst no, triple E outbreak in more than a decade. Dr. Joanne Kaladon, I know I chopped that up, the department's chief medical executive and chief deputy for health said in a release. The ongoing case reported in humans and animals and the severity of this disease illustrate the most important importance of taking precautions against mosquito bites. Typically, only 5 to 10 human triple E cases are reported every year, but about 30% of all cases result in death, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Now, we know mosquitoes sorry about that we got a little bit of storm here we know that mosquitoes are a threat as far as carrying many types of diseases West Nile, Denang, yellow fever, Tripoli alright here in Florida we have pterodactyls when it comes to mosquitoes they're huge I mean you get hit by it you're gonna pick yourself up off the ground they hit you so hard so let me go and pull up my other reports for y'all on these subjects one of the things I found very interesting of course in today's political world everything is associated with climate change the climate ch crisis okay so this is off also off of CNN uh, how climate crisis is accelerating the global spread of deadly Denang fever this was uh, Wednesday, September 18th. Explosive outbreaks of Denang fever have rapidly spread in countries across Asia, killing more than 1,000 people, infecting hundreds of thousands, and straining hospitals packed with sick families. Images from Bangladesh show patients and teeming hospital wards lying beneath mosquito nets under lurid electric strip lightings. Mothers cool their children from the sticky summer heat with handheld fans while others rest on hospital floors holding drips waiting for free bed. Holding drips. I'm guessing that's IVs. This is the worst outbreak Bangladesh has ever seen. Five times as many people were infected in August than the whole of 2018 and so far this year, 57 people have died. Now, this is related to mosquitoes. All right. So, I want to tie in another story that recently came out to these mosquitoes. You know, we sit back and we watch scientists play around with genetic structures of animals all the time usually is in 
what they say disease per, uh, prevention, extinction prevention, or the to make things better. Alright, so this one here, this report came from as soon as my phone reconnects. This is futurism.com. Gene hacked mosquitoes to be infertile, backfired spectacularly. It's a big word, I know. On its surface, the plan was simple gene hack mosquitoes so their offspring immediately die. Mix them with disease spreading bugs in the wild and watch the population drop off. Unfortunately, that didn't plan out. The genetically altered mosquitoes did mix with the wild population, and for a brief period, the number of mosquitoes in Jacobin, Jacobino, Brazil, I messed that up, I know, did plummet. According to research published in Nature Scientific Reports last week, but 18 months later, the population bounced right back up. New Atlantis reports, and even worse, the new genetic hybrids may even be more resilient to future attempts to quill their numbers. Mosquitoes capable of transmitting dangerous diseases like Zika, Denang, Malaria are spreading further, farther than ever thanks to global climate change. To combat them, scientists sometimes try to alter the bug's genetics so that they couldn't reproduce. Now, uh, like I said, I'll put up all those articles for you to follow on your own. Um, something here in Florida that we've experienced in the past. We've all heard, everyone in Florida knows about these. I'm sure many other places in the states have heard of this. We have what's known as the love bug. This was a genetically altered insect that was originally designed to combat mosquitoes. It was a complete flop. Now, every year we have these swarms of these bugs connected together because they're trying to reproduce they have a very short lifespan that's that's why they call them love bugs because as soon as they're able to that's all you see these things trying to reproduce they're not really an ecological threat here but they are a massive nuisance um, if you got a brand new vehicle and you run through a swarm of these things make sure you wash off your car pretty quick uh, the blood and stuff inside these things works almost like an acid it will eat the paint job of your vehicle if not removed uh, so yeah it's more of a nuisance but you know they had great intentions they're gonna sit there and manipulate gene structures they're gonna go out and change things obviously if you're listening to me right now you already know that I do not agree with anybody trying to play God all right, now, one of the things I get a lot on here on this channel, people ask me all the time, well, what can we do to help with mosquitoes as far as in our yards? You know, what, you know, we all have heard of DEET spray. I mean, I've got DEET spray. I also use the uh, Skin So Soft um, Avon cells. Works great. All right, but a lot of people don't like p putting chemicals on them. I mean, the Skin So Soft is lesser on the chemical structure so it's actually better for your body but you know I always carry deep because that deep wood is gonna kill anything but it's not good for you okay so I always get questions on what can I do well there are plants that you can plant in your home and I'll be popping up some pictures here for you so that you can actually see which plants I'm talking about um, basically just plant them around your house okay and they will help repel mosquitoes all right, number one, we everybody knows of citronella. Chances are you've heard of this one before. It is one of the most common ingredients in most mosquito repellents. Strange enough, though, many people don't even know that citronella is actually a plant. Citronella is a beautiful perennial clumping grass that emits a strong aroma. That aroma masks other scents, keeps mosquitoes from being attracted to things located around it. We've all heard of citronella. I mean, we have centronella candles and uh, bug zappers in our backyard. Lemon balm is number two. A member of the mint family, the plant also known as horse mint or bee balm, 
is very easy for planting for beginner growers even if you don't like or have a green thumb. Lemon balm is a very hardy plant. It resists drought and it grows well even in shade. It is a very fast growing and sometimes aggressive plant so you may want to contain it in a pot. All right, so it spreads like a weed pretty much. Number three, catnip. Your feline friends will be happy to know that catnip is a great mosquito deterrent. In fact, a 2010 study researchers found that catnip is 10 times more effective than DEET. There you go. The ingredient commonly found in bug repellents. Now, having nat natural repellents is a lot better for your body anyway. All right, spraying those aerosols, you're going to breathe it in. Even though I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not saying you're huffing it, but spraying it on you, you still, you're still breathing it in. It's getting on your skin. It's, it's going into your pores. Uh, that's why I'm pretty sure the can say do not spray on exposed skin. But you know, if you're out in the woods, you definitely spray some deed on you. All right, number four, marigolds. I've talked about this in the past. A bright, hardy annual plant, marigolds are a great choice for repelling mosquitoes. Marigolds contain pyreth pyrethium, I know I messed it up, an ingredient found in many insect repellents and have a unique aroma which bugs find repulsive. Marigolds, so now your yard's all nice and pretty. So that's actually, you know, a nice little flower. Basil is number five. Calling all cooks. Want a double whammy when it comes to mosquito protection. I don't know who wrote this stuff up. Plant some basil. All right. Basil works as an easy, quick mosquito repellent. So, yeah, actually even talking about it, you can crush it up and rub it on you. All right. But even just growing it in the yard helps with the uh, aroma. All right. Number six, lavender. Okay. We've all seen lavender plants of the purple flower. You know, the, a lot of people put them in the yards. Uh, it is a natural mosquito repellent. Um, of course, it's known for common scent, soothing, things like that. Um, but yes, the aroma does help with keeping mosquitoes out of your yard. Number seven, peppermint. Most bugs despite the smell of despise the smell and taste of peppermint. So growing it around your home is a great way to keep them from dropping by on a vitamin. Fight it. Plus, if you happen to get bit, peppermint leaves rubbed directly onto the skin make a great bite, insect bite relief treatment. I did not know that one. Okay. Number eight, garlic. Uh, yeah, garlic pretty much repels everybody. I don't like garlic. I don't like the taste of it. But that's just me. I like garlic bread. I think it's because of the garlic butter. I don't know. But I'm not a big fan. But yes, that is a protection right there. Alright, number nine, Penny Royal. The adorable Penny Royal flower is a natural deterrent for mosquitoes. Make sure to plant some around your flower beds. Uh, they make great ground cover. And they also attract butterflies. Number 10 is rosemary. Rosemary is a beautiful flower and plant that is often used to flavor lamb or fish dishes. <laughs> but it is also a natural mosquito repellent. Number 11, this is the last one I have for you guys. Geraniums. This beautiful flower and plant is a great choice for mosquito repellent. Um, unfortunately it doesn't have what chemical makeup the plant actually has in it that works but it is also another plant that you can actually just plant and it will take care of the area for you so they do say that you can break the leaves of the plant rubbing the oil directly on the skin um, also has a positive effect on beating mosquitoes so it basically works as a bug repellent you can actually smear on your skin instead of using a heavy deep product. Alright guys, so I will not take any more of your time today. That was just something I wanted to get out there for y'all. Um, like I said, I've had those questions before about what can be planted as far as a natural 
mosquito repellent. Well, there's a list of 11 plants right there. Excuse me. I do apologize. Um, again, guys, when you see these scientists start manipulating insect population, it never seems to work out for them. They're always doing these tests, and they're doing tests all the time. I mean, it's not just insect population. They are doing many, many tests. All right, some things are banned to be tested here in the United States, so they just go to a different country. All right, but the fact is that they released, it was like a million of these um, genetically altered mosquitoes into the environment. Now, I mean, and it didn't work. Okay, now they're sitting there saying that it, the ones that did breed, because the new larvae and stuff had, did grow and they didn't die off, now they are genetically hardened pretty much from other means of destroying these insects, preventing them. So yeah, good things to think about, guys. All right, y'all take care, and I'll speak to y'all later.